kill you in truth mornings. It's your boy D Mac back. I'm back. I was sick. I was really sick. Like and subscribe. We're going to get to uh, Sean Payton and Russell Wilson here in a second. What's on the shelf? Are you kidding me? I'm back, Johnny. Did you miss me? Did you miss your boy? You're back? I, what are you talking about? Wow. What did I miss while I was away? I I, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. You were okay. away? Were you off last week? You're almost hurting my feelings. You you I'm glad you f- are feeling better. D Meg, you were you were like sick as a dog last week. Man. Oh my god, I was so darn sick. I can't even tell you. I couldn't even talk and I'm I'm back to feeling like myself and sounding like myself. <sighs> Johnny What's the question of the day? Uh, how are you feeling? No. Um, I'm glad you're feeling better, though. Thank you, sweetie. Um, <laughs> why did Sean Pay- Payton yell at Russell Wilson? Oh, my Wilson? God. Did you see that? I did. Holy cow. Was he mad? He was up. Rah, 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 And he was like, so, so. He was like, rah, 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 rah. And then, like, he turned around and he gave him the... Uh, The evil eye. He got the evil eye. He got the walkaway evil eye. And then um, the quarterback coach there, that tall drink of water there, um, I always screw up that dude's name. It's not Wade, but it's it's something like that. I don't know. You know, that tall dude in the white shirt who's like a, was a quarterback like last week and now is a quarterback coach. You know, I really could look it up, but I haven't. A- anyways, he's standing there and he's looking like, you know, He's kind of like, uh, he's not yelling at me. I Davis always... Webb. Davis Webb. There you go. Isn't Davis Webb a golfer? Maybe. Sounds like a golf name, right? Sounds like somebody you'd like to slap in the head. Shut up. Anyways, uh, yeah, uh, he's, 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 uh, well, he's like seven feet tall, that Davis Webb guy. So he's like way taller than everybody. And Sean Payton is chewing out Russell Wilson. And Wilson's just standing there. He, now, to Wilson's credit, he kept eye contact, but like, fight back, Russ. Okay, why did he do it? Uh, this is a tricky one because I think it's very complicated. It's it's the frustration of the play itself, of, of having it like uh, second, third, first, second, third. I mean, you're at the goal line. You, you just allowed the uh, the Lions to run up and down the, the field on you. You're trailing by a bunch, and, you know, you need to score. You're, you're, you're what, I think it's 28 to 7 at the time. Yeah, it was. And, like, you score a touchdown, you're, you're back in the game, man. It's a two-score game, and you're doing okay. The, the problem was um, you had to settle for a field goal, but you didn't have to settle for a field goal. You still could have gone for it on fourth down. In fact, I don't know why they didn't go for it on fourth down. I think that is sort of um, biting your nose to spite your face. Like, oh, got to go for a field goal now because you guys screwed everything up. So the play itself, um, Quinn Miner's helmet was just slightly offsides. And I do believe it was slightly offsides. Now, is that a flag you should really throw? No. I mean, that is so ticky tack. It's absolutely ridiculous. It wasn't a false start. There wasn't an inherent advantage. That was just a uh, an official being over officious. The play itself, there obviously was some sort of communication issue that Russell Wilson screwed up. So he got yelled at, I believe specifically, because they screwed up some sort of call. Now, don't forget, in a previous game, um, final play of the game against the Texans, Russ didn't get guys in motion that he was supposed to get in motion. Like he screwed up the call. And I, I, I think what you saw was the boiling over of frustration. Now, the irony here is there were two plays before that with Jaleel McLaughlin and Javante Williams. Both you could have thrown a challenge flag on because I think they both scored. But for whatever reason, you didn't. You didn't throw the challenge flag. So you kind of got caught if you're Sean Payton not doing what you should have done. And and maybe, just maybe, they were trying to figure out whether or not they should throw 
a challenge flag and you're snapping the ball just a, a little bit too quick. I mean, there was plenty of time left on the clock, play clock, when he snapped the ball. The reason he specifically was yelling at Russell Wilson was because of a communication issue with executing whatever they were doing. That's that's the simple thing. And you can tell that this is something they've gone over a million times, okay? Because I know Sean Payton is a good coach when it comes to that. The degree of preparation and um, preparedness in those type of situations is excellent. And, and maybe Sean Payton didn't want to waste the time out if he lost the challenge. What the hell? They're at the one-yard line. You know, just go in. We can do this. I don't need to challenge this. I've got a play to call. What you really saw when you saw Sean Payton yelling at Russell Wilson is months and months of frustration dealing with each other. That's what you saw. You you saw, and specifically, Sean Payton having to deal with Russell Wilson. What you saw was an explosion of, I can't do the things I can do as a football mastermind with this dude. Plain and simple. I'm not saying this dude is terrible. I'm not saying this dude can't win football games. But I just can't freaking do what I need to do. And it ticks me off. And that's why I was screaming at him. Because I'm frustrated. And I've been frustrated for a long time. And I continue to be frustrated. That's what it was on the uh, sublinear psychological level. So you had the, you didn't communicate what you needed to communicate with Davis Webb. Like, uh, I hope he's not yelling at me and Russell Wilson, just not fighting back whatsoever, which I fight back Russ. I mean, fight back. You're just going to stand there and take that. Thought it was humiliating. I thought it was terrible coaching. Thought it was a bad moment for Sean Payton. Is Sean Payton right to be frustrated that he can't get things done and do things the way he wants to get them done? Sure. He's the coach. You know, it's, it, it, it wasn't his hump as he said, having Russell Wilson. He took the job. He's trying to make it work the best that he can. He can't do the things that he wants to do with Russell Wilson. The end. Doesn't mean they can't win. Doesn't mean they can't have some form of compromise. But this guy is, um, he has some tough moments, Sean Payne. He does. He mentally has some tough moments. And Sean Keeler was incredibly critical. He said that Sean Payton threw the white flag, not the red challenge flag, because he just gave up on the team. I'm really not sure down 28 to 7 why on fourth and goal from like the six yard line, you still don't go for it. I mean, what's the worst that can happen? You pick up three points, but you know, so what? I mean, does, did you really think it was going to matter? The, the Lions are going up and down the, the field like a hot knife through butter at that point. To, to me, that was a, uh, uh, uh grr, I'm mad, kick the field goal, you know, and if you don't trust your quarterback who you're paying all these millions of dollars on fourth and six, what do you got? Meanwhile, you look over at Dan Campbell and the Lions and, oh, my God, the degree that they love this dude is, is off the charts. And then you look at Houston, the Texans, and, you know, the way they love D'Amico Ryans, and, and you you sort of have that moment in Jerry Maguire near the end of the movie where, you know, the, the tall quarterback looks down at Bob Sugar and goes, why don't we have that relationship? And then Bob Sugar tries to put his arm around him, but is just like, you know, get out of here. We don't have that relationship. And that relationship takes time to build or frustrations. And, and, and why you saw Sean Payton screaming at Russell Wilson is because he's contemplating what the next couple of years might look like for him around here. He doesn't believe in Russell Wilson. I don't know how else to put it. And that's why you saw him screaming at him. And I don't think it was a very good way. I hate that type of coaching. I have no idea how those two guys um, get on the same page after that. It was humiliating. It was a public dressing down. It's Saturday night. You're the only NFL game. Millions of people are watching. And that's how you resolve that issue. And did you notice, too, there was no coach 
to sort of separate them, nor nor a coach for Sean Payton to go to. So again, is Sean Payton wrong? Probably not. He probably called plays that would work. They didn't practice Quinn Miners being offsides. I mean, n- none of this is it's practice to work, not to fall apart. Now, that being said, I don't know how the Broncos lose these next two games. I have no idea against the pathetic Patriots and the Chargers how they actually drop them. And then that leads uh, a game against the the Raiders later on. But, Johnny, I got some bad news for you. Oh, you no. Ready? You ready for some bad news? I was, I was pre-ready for some bad news. The Broncos need to be in seventh place. Do you know what place they're in right now? Ooh, 10th? 11th. Roughly? 11th? Huh? They are in 11th place. They are tied with the Steelers at 7-7, seven and seven, but they lose because um, the Steelers have the best percentage in conference games. I mean, we're going down the list here on tiebreakers. They're below the 8-6 and six Buffalo Bills, the 8-6 and six Houston Texans, which they don't have a tiebreaker to. They're below the eight and six Indianapolis Colts, and they're below the eight and six Cincinnati Bengals, a, a division where, you know, well, who knows what's going to go on there. Listen, this ain't great. Um, with eight losses, the Raiders are out of it. The Chargers are definitely out of it. And the Patriots are the worst team, maybe in the NFL. I mean, maybe they're the worst team in the NFL because Carolina actually won. So both teams, well, New England's 3-11, and 11, so maybe they're not. And, and New England actually gave Kansas City a bit of a test, a little bit of a test. But that's the problem, Johnny. You, you need some significant help. Winning all three games may not be enough. Ten wins may not get you in. I think it'll give you the best chance that you can. I didn't really, I wasn't really counting on this Detroit game. I did think they would win, which was foolish of me, but I was really sick last week. And what you have now is a situation where you've got two pathetic teams and they're at home. Like you can't lose. Well, you can't lose the rest of the way. These are literally must win games. Here we are. We're finally to the point of must win games. And if you don't make the playoffs at 10 and seven, then wow, that sucks because you'll, you'll definitely lose because of tie breaking reasons. Like there will be, you wouldn't, there will be teams that get in at 10 and seven. You just didn't win the right games. So it's tough, Johnny. It's tough. I'm not going to lie to you. It's tough. And, and the bigger issue is like, well, what are, what are these Broncos? Who, who are they really? And the fact is they may just be a sort of average middling football team. Not bad, not terrible, but you know, not that great either. How does that make you feel, Johnny? That the coach doesn't like the quarterback. The quarterback is, I mean, I think Russ likes everybody. Uh, but I mean that, you know, you're kind of stuck in the middle here. You're a Steelers wheel. It, it's it's kind of what would you rather have? Would you rather be really bad, potentially have that hope of a great draft pick? Would you be, you know, good enough to get into the playoffs? This is kind of just like eh. The harsh reality, I kill you with truth, you've got to move on from Russell Wilson. But it's not clear how to do that. It's not. I think you need to use your first-round pick and draft a quarterback. Do the best you can and hope you get lucky. I think that quarterback should play under Russell Wilson for at least a year, and then you do the best you can with Russ for one more year. After that, it's a little bit of a push. We'll see what's what after that. But you're kind of stuck with Russell Wilson's contract for the next couple of years. The best thing to do is prepare to move on and do the best you can to win. But this is not a pretty picture. This is a coach who doesn't trust his quarterback, who doesn't really like his quarterback. If, if, if he had any, he doesn't really have much respect for his quarterback. So what's it going to be? Are are you going to stick with the quarterback or stick with the coach? Because I can't imagine a world where Sean Payton is banging the table to keep Russell Wills. And that is the dang truth. Uh, The Nuggets host Dallas tonight. They lost over the weekend. Saturday sucked, man. 
the the Nuggets lose on a last second shot to Oklahoma City. The Avalanche lose six to two to Winnipeg, who they're kind of battling with in the Western Conference. Yeah, School of Mines allowed more than 500 rushing yards to get, you know, molly uh down there in Texas by some team from some other place. I thought that Mines molly whopped. Molly whopped. They got molly whopped. Okay. Is that, yeah. a, what's, is uh, that a if word? You knew, is that if, you knew Mo- if you knew Molly, she can whop you. Ain't no doubt about it. So Saturday sucked. Uh, Sunday got a little bit better yesterday with the Avalanche winning on uh, Kids Night. Do you like Kids Night on the old broadcast there where kids are just doing everything, Johnny? You like little kids, like screaming little kid stuff? Yeah. yeah. I, you know what? Say the no and you're busted? say. Say no, and you're a bad person. The the kids got to do something. Like you got to play on the field. You got to scrimmage against like the mascots. You got to like do the cheerleading. You got to do the mutton busting. Just on the broadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that happened last night, and there was a little cute year old seven year girl named Charlie, and she was adorable. And if you think otherwise, you're a jerk. That's what Anywho, I meant to say. She was so adorable. That's what I meant to say. She was flat out adorable. V and Johnny. I can't believe you would think anything else. She was damn adorable. Because that's what kids are. They're damn adorable. Those kids. We should have more of them. Well, well, I shouldn't. I already got a vasectomy, so I can't have. I'm I'm done. TMI. I, I had to. It's time for you to help with the population, Johnny. <laughs> you had two vasectomies? First one didn't stick. Well, that's usually the problem. I'm lying. I just had the second one for fun. Doctor got in there and was like, hey, no need. I'm like, yeah, I know. All right, Johnny. Um, what's on the shelf? What's on the shelf? What's on the shelf? It's been a little, it's been too long since we've it's done it. It's been too long. Time. Yeah. Uh, there was some. There is some new stuff on the shelf that I've seen. Uh, we haven't gotten to yet, but um, what's what's this uh, colorful card that's on the the far left over there, on your left, stage Here? left? Yep, right there. Ah, oh. what is Birthday what is this card. item on the shelf? Well, Johnny, <clears throat> this says "Happy Birthday to a Real All Star." And inside, inside, it uh, says uh, you're number one. So if anybody doubted I was number one, I've got proof. Now, Jim, this card. Jim says, uh, Jim says he hopes he, that you had a fantastic birthday, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. J- Jim, this, Jim is given more thought to this than I have. This, this is signed by one of my baseball teams. But there's there's only like five kids that signed it. <laughs> it's like everyone who was around that day. <laughs> but Jim likes me. Jim likes and me. And I'm number one. And these all <laughs> these kids, all these kids. Remember what I told you about kids? They're adorable. So it's a birthday card from one of the teams that I coached. Jim, Jim's got to be a deck because Jim has like actual handwriting. And the other kid, the kids, is a, it's like scribbles. At this point, you can't. Yeah, really but those it. kids I like better than the other kids. But yes, Johnny, in my time as a coach, I was the real all star. That's a sweet card, isn't it? That my my oh. kids that I coach uh, gave me. That's one of those just like, uh, hey, uh, kids, sign this. Yep. Sort of moments. That's, you know, you get the, the equivalent of the office. Hey, sign this. All right. Hey, sign this. I've, I've barely worked here. Doesn't matter. Sign this. But Johnny, just in case you're wondering who you're working with, you're That's working with the real all star. A real all star. A real all star. A real all star. But it's not your birthday. So are, are you only an all star on your birthday? Johnny, look at me. Do you think I was ever an all star? All right, I kill you a truth. I hope everybody has a great day. I'm happy to be back. And uh, everybody else, be satisfied with being number two. You're hashtag number one.